Hello everyone, I'm bringing you another video today in a series looking at US Vietnam War era personal items and this is to say basically civilian items which soldiers would have potentially taken with them when deployed to Vietnam. So we've previously had a look at magazines, books, we've had a look at cameras as well with the Kodak Instamatic which is a very good choice if you're looking to add a camera to your US Vietnam War kit. What we're looking at in this video is uh, radios and cassette players. So Prior to the introduction of the compact cassette in the 1960s, of course, reel-to-reel -reel tape players had been around for a long time and they were certainly used in country as well. What we're looking at in this video is actually a cassette player and there was a real boom in this sort of consumer electronics in the 1960s, both small portable radios and small portable tape players using music cassettes. And obviously this was a relatively new development. Originally the cassette was intended for recording and you'd have a tape player stroke recorder but as the 60s wore on music cassettes became more and more common and there's certainly some evidence of uh, troops certainly later in the Vietnam War taking cassette players with them to be able to listen to music. They're quite bulky so it would generally be, I don't think you'd necessarily see these carried in the field and they're quite bulky and heavy. Uh, a small radio is much more likely to be seen carried in the field uh, to tune into the US uh, Vietnam network, the, Vien the uh, US forces radio network in Vietnam. So just to bear that in mind when you're thinking about what to pick up to include with your kit, without further ado, we'll get into the main part of the video now and have a look at this cassette player and an example of a period transistor radio. So we're going to start off here talking about cassette players and recorders. Obviously prior to the introduction of the compact cassette, you had the reel-to-reel -reel tape player, strip recorder, including smaller versions which were portable and could be taken with you in country and occasionally they are seen. But certainly I've heard of the use of cassette players and recorders and there are actually some existing cassettes which were recorded in country by men serving in country and obviously news reports and so forth and then sent home. We'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. What we have here are two late 1960s examples of cassette recorders stroke players so these will both record and play cassettes. Obviously a speaker here but you also have with this general electric example a handheld microphone for recording which obviously plugs into this and obviously you have the record control here. This Sanyo example is very very similar. You again have the record button up there. We'll pull this out of its cover in just a minute. So General Electric obviously this is produced in the US or at least marketed in the US from General Electric. I'm not sure if these were actually made in the US in a US factory but certainly from General Electric a US company. And this one here from Sanyo which is of course a Japanese based company. The compact cassette player was actually an invention of Philips. You didn't see Philips marketed in the US, so certainly from a point of view of US troops, you would not generally speaking see Philips manufactured uh, electronics in use. Uh, you more likely see Norelco, which was the version of Philips, the brand name used for Philips products in the US. And certainly you could therefore have compact set player strip recorders a bit earlier than this. They were around from about 1964, I think was the first, 1962 forget exactly exactly the development of Philips uh, cassette recorders, uh, compact cassette recorders, but around uh, the mid 60s you were seeing those come into production, obviously the Norelco versions of those. These two are both sort of later 60s examples. They both function, there are slight issues with both of them. This one won't rewind and this one has a problem with the battery compartment, but they are functional otherwise. I just need to do a little bit of work on this to see why it won't rewind cassettes, but as you'll see in a minute or two it does play. This is powered by four C-cell batteries in the back there. You can see I have Duracell batteries fitted here. Slight advantage on the Norelco stroke Philips designs, which actually required five. And this obviously just pops up. You load a cassette in here and play. Rather nice in that it did come with all the paperwork as well, this particular example, as well as the uh, little microphone and also a, I think it also came with an external power supply as well, that might have been for the Sanyu. I'm not entirely sure, I can't remember. It's stored away somewhere. So you've got a uh, pink envelope there for sending off paperwork if required. Got marketing paperwork from General Electric there. The General Electric purchase registration. And then you have a little manual here, cartridge tape recorder, with quite old style sort of uh, visuals on the front there. I guess for the late 60s, sort of a, a retro thing in that regard, in the late 60s. Something it looks more like sort of a 40s or 50s or even earlier sort of illustration on the front there. You can see the details here on the inside. 
And the great thing with these, of course, is that you could both play music and also record cassettes to be sent back to family members. And that was quite common at the time. And we have an example here of a, a GE tape cartridge. I open this up here. And that's the cassette itself. As I say, ref referred to as tape cartridges by GE at the time, but it is a standard compact cassette. And this again is from the late 60s. Just a little cardboard box that that slots into. But on the back here, for domestic purposes, you actually have a place to write an address and a return address and then a place to put your postage as well to send this through the post. So that's an interesting feature of these tape cartridges. Of course you could record music and stuff onto these as well if you wanted to. Music cassettes did exist for these. Another example of a period cassette is this Scotch cassette from the very late 1960s, early 1970s. And I know this is of the right period because there's actually an example of one of these in an article online which includes recordings from Vietnam, a reporter, I think it was a reporter of the time, using one of these in the very late 60s, early 1970s. So this design of Scotch tape is correct for the period as well. So just a couple of examples of cassettes for recording there. And I have here something quite inoffensive, the Beach Boys, again a period music cassette. And let's see, we'll test this and see so this is operated by a lever down on the side here. And there we go. So most of these I've found tend to arrive at least semi-functional. They may need new drive belts and so forth. But having something playing period music can be a nice addition to a display. So I'll just stop that there for the rest of the video. So, and again, music sets from the period are very easy to find as well. Obviously, you don't want to use them too much. You don't necessarily want to wear them out. But you can always mix old music onto a, a new cassette and play it through one of these. As I had at an event at the local hangar where the Huey is based locally, I had a uh, cassette player pe playing period music there as part of the Australian display I had. Moving on to talk about the Sanyo example here. If I remove this from the the outer cover here. And one thing with this, I'll just bring this out of frame for one moment. I don't want to unfasten the carrying strap because it's a little bit uh, delicate. So I'll just pull the flap of this out from under the carrying strap so I can show you the player itself. I'll put the carrier to the cover to one side. Here is the player itself, and this is almost a direct copy of the G example. We'll put them side by side here. You can see the control there is extremely. Um, similar, basically a copy, and the carrying handle and so forth, the volume control and the ear pieces and the microphone input are all in the same place there, as is the record button. Obviously this flips up in the same way so that you can pop a cassette in there. And in the back here, again, you can see the, the screws can, for construction and so forth are all in the same place. The battery compartment is basically the same as well. Fortunately, this is missing the plastic tab which locks the little uh, flap for the battery compartment in place. So I need to do some repair there, maybe make something out of metal and I'll dite it in place on the back there so that it will actually stay in place. A piece of aluminium or something maybe, a piece of, piece of steel probably better, have a bit more spring in it just to latch that in position at the back there. So as I say, just another example of uh, one from the, the period, again, the late 1960s and obviously used through the early 1970s. And it's in the 1970s you really see these start to appear with, with push button controls rather than sort of slides and various other functions obviously just to make them a little bit more user friendly in the late 60s early 70s most of the examples you'll see will have this sort of control on the side so just two examples there obviously the sanyo we have the the manual for that as well here various different details obviously you've got the the ac input there so you can plug this directly into the mains details that this did also come with a microphone which I have stored away elsewhere. You can see that there, obviously head cleaning was shown there as well and you can see here Sanyo Electric Company Limited Osaka Japan printed in Japan. So that's a look at a couple of examples of tape players stroke recorders 
and as I say, these were, were quite expensive uh, electronics at the time. I think certainly in terms of consumer electronics, when companies like Sanyo and so, so forth started making them, the price did begin, begin to come down a bit. But you're looking at sort of equivalent to buying a laptop computer today. So they weren't cheap items. Not everyone would have had them. But they can make a nice addition to a display, particularly in a sort of more static situation. If you're doing something, a, a tabletop display of kit and so forth, these can make a nice addition to that sort of display. We'll move on now to have a look at a pocket radio, which is another useful item which you can use. And we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail now. This is the radio we're going to have a look at. And this is a fairly typical example of a pocket radio of the time. It does have an extendable antenna or aerial there, as you can see. And this is both FM and AM. And this has advantages because you can use this to tune into modern FM broadcasts, of course. AM radio still does exist. But this has other advantages, which we'll talk about in just a minute. It's a very simple little design. You do have a little socket there for earphones to listen to this on an earpiece. The controls are on the side here. This is the volume stroke on off, and this is the tuner. So you can tune in and out using that, as you can see. And then you have the FM AM switch on the back here, as you can see there. And the battery compartment, which I can open this up, takes a single nine volt battery. You can see the connector for that in there. So a rather nice little thing, a Westminster solid state pocket radio. Again, late 60s, early 70s, possibly mid 60s. I've seen some documentation online saying these appeared about 1965, which would fit a lot of consumer electronics of this type appeared around that period, the mid 60s. So certainly you, uh, a item suitable for late war use. And uh, these were much cheaper to buy than the cassette players and recorders we were just looking at. So. You can use these as well, as we'll get into in just a moment, to play period broadcasts. So what I have here is a Bluetooth to FM transmitter. So this receives Bluetooth, connects to your phone or your laptop using Bluetooth, and then it broadcasts on an FM band. And it, this particular example is useful in that it plugs into USB. I have one in my car, which plugs into the cigarette lighter for basically broadcasting to the car's radio. That's what these are really designed for, which allows you to Bluetooth through to the car's radio. And when your car doesn't have Bluetooth, you're basically creating an FM broadcast for the car to pick up using one of these. But it can also be used with this. And we're, we'll have a look at that just now. I'll get this plugged in, and I'll show you it broadcasting a, a period uh, American Forces Vietnam Network broadcast to the radio, which sounds rather good. So I'll get this set up now, and we'll have a look at that. So I've got this broadcasting on 95.3, as you can see there. I'll just turn the radio on. You can possibly hear the fizz there, just from a bit of static. And then I will play on the device over here. Let's see if I can turn the volume up a little bit. See if I can tune in. And there we go. So this is a broadcast from the American Forces Network Vietnam from 1970 playing through the radio and it's actually picking it up on a, an FM band so this has had no modification to it at all and it's just picking up from this little broadcaster here which is rather nice so you don't have to modify the radio at all and it's actually picking up a, an actual broadcast and it will I can move it away from this you could have this hidden under a table somewhere and the radio will pick it up fairly well. So there we are. Rather pleased with this little setup, and as I say, this will be appearing at future events uh, with uh, this broadcasting. Um, probably from my phone, have it plugged into a, a charge pack or something like that, and then broadcast to this from my phone using Bluetooth, and then this will broadcast on an FM band, which can be picked up on the radio. So quite pleased with this little setup as I say just 
and it's very easy to tune in and get a relatively good uh, quality of signal and uh, yeah that's uh, that's how I've got this set up with a little FM broadcaster and obviously as I say got the 9 volt battery in there just the modern 9 volt battery it works off that quite happily so there it is a little Westminster radio and little setup to allow this to actually receive period broadcast and thankfully they're available on YouTube I also have a I think a CD of these that I think Ian Parker sent me, so I need to get those actually onto the computer or onto my phone and send them over to my phone so I have those so I can play them through this at events going forward. So I do hope you found it interesting looking at this. If you have and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the notification button down below, which will of course alert you when I upload future videos. But that's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.